God should be finished as he has declared to his servants the prophets. Now, see, the mystery of this seven-sealed book will be revealed at the sounding of the seventh church angel's message. See? The seventh angel begins to sound. There's the messages wrote out there. and We got in tape and book form. Now, at the beginning of the sounding of the message, the mystery of God should be finished at that time. Now, we will notice the book of the mystery of God is not revealed until the seventh angel's message is sounded. Now, these points will be important in the seals, I'm sure. Because it must every bit tie together. Now, it's real mysterious because no man nowhere knows it. God alone. Jesus Christ. See? Now, but is, it is a book, a mysterious book. It's a book of redemption. We'll get into that in a little while. And now, we know that this book of redemption will not be thoroughly understood. It's probed at through six church ages. But at the end, when the seventh angel begins to sound his mystery... He winds up all of the loose ends that these fellows probed at. And the mysteries comes down from God as the Word of God and reveals the entire revelation of God. Then the Godhead and everything else is settled. All the mysteries, serpent seed and whatever more, is to be revealed. Uh, You see, I'm just not making that up. That's what it's thus saith the Lord. I read it to you out of the book. The sounding of the seventh angel's message. The mystery of God should be finished. That's been declared by his holy prophets. That's the prophets who has wrote the word at the sounding of the seventh church age, the last church age, all the loose ends that through these church ages have been Probe that will be wound up together. And when the seals are broke and the mystery is revealed, down comes the angel, the messenger, Christ, setting his foot upon the land and upon the sea with a rainbow over his head. Now remember, this seventh angel is on earth at the time of this coming. Just as John was giving his message, the same time that Messiah come in the days, John knew he would see him because he's going to introduce him. And we realize that in the scriptures over in Malachi 4, there's to be a one like John, an Elijah, to whom the word of God can come to. And he is to reveal by the Holy Spirit all the mysteries of God and restore the faith of the children back to the faith of the apostolic fathers. Amen. Restore back all these mysteries that's been probed up through these denominational years. Amen. Now that's what the Word says. Amen. I'm just responsible for what it says. See, it's, it's written. It's right. That's what it is. Now, we see that this seven seal book now is the mystery of redemption. It's a book of redemption from God. Now, all the mysteries at this time should be finished at the sounding of this messenger. Now, here's the angel on earth and another angel, mighty messenger. Come down. See, this angel was an earthly angel, messenger. But here comes one down from heaven. Rainbow, covenant. See? Only Christ it could be. Just exactly like it was in Revelation's first chapter, standing in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks with a rainbow. 
to look upon as Jasper and Sardis stone. And here he returns back in the 10th chapter after the coming time and all the mysteries is to be finished and the seals are to be broke and proclaiming that it's time is no more. And he said, when the seventh angel has begun to sound, then the mystery should be finished and time for the angel to appear. We're close somewhere. Right. Now, notice, the seven seals holds the mystery of the book. Until we can see what those seven seals have sealed in, we're only pursuing them. Because as I told you this morning, upon my little message this morning, of God hiding in simplicity, you see, we are, we are, we are sure to miss the thing unless it is absolutely, genuinely revealed by the Holy Spirit and vindicated the same. See? If the prophet rises and tells you that this is just that, and God don't vindicate the same, forget it. See? But God in every statement and everything has to vindicate it to make it right. See? So, his children will watch those things. See? And be alert. Notice, seven seals on the book has the, these seven seals, has the book sealed. See? The book is absolutely sealed. Do you see it? The book is absolutely a sealed book. Until the seven seals is broken. It is sealed up with seven seals. Now that's a different from the seven thunders. See, this is seven seals on the book. And the book will not, the seals will not be released until the message of the seventh angel. See? So we... We are pursuing, but the genuine revelation of God will be made perfect in that sounding, vindicated truth. That's exactly what the word says. The mystery should be finished at that time. And this seven seal book, you remember, it was closed here in Revelations, the fifth chapter. And in Revelation the 10th chapter, it is opened. And now we're going to see what the book says about uh, how it becomes open. And it is not made known until the Lamb takes the book and breaks the seals and opens the book. The Lamb's got to take the book. It's his. Now remember, no man in heaven, no man in earth, Pope, Bishop, Cardinal, state president, or whoever he is, can break them seals or reveal the book but the Lamb. And we have probed and presumed and stumbled and wondered, and that's the reason we're all in such a confusion. But with the divine promise that this book of redemption will be perfectly open. Amen. Hallelujah. By the Lamb. And the seals thereof will be loosed by the Lamb in the last days in which we are living. Now, and it is not made known until the Lamb takes the book and breaks the seals. Because remember, the book was being holded in the hands of him that sat upon the throne. And the Lamb comes to him that sits upon the throne and Takes the book out of his right hand. Takes the book. Oh, that's deep. We'll try to solve it out if we can by the help of the Holy Spirit. Now, we're depending on it. And we will see later, it is at the end time when time has run out. No denominations has a right for the interpretation of the book. 
No man has a right to interpret it. It is the Lamb who interprets it. And the Lamb is the one who speaks it, and the Lamb makes the Word to be known by vindicating and bringing the Word to life. Second, notice, and is not revealed until this book is not revealed until the church ages and denominational ages has run out and there's time no more. See it? It's only revealed after church ages and denominational ages has run out. That's the reason the thing is in such a scruple tonight. See? They pick up a little doctrine and they run off here to one side and say, this is it. Another picks up another doctrine and runs off this side and says, this is it. And each one builds a denomination hundred until we got hundreds of denominations. But still in all of it, to see the confusion that people are wondering, what is truth? If that isn't just a condition today. But then he promises that when that time has finished out, there will be the sounding of the seventh angel's voice, and then the book will be revealed mm-hmm. at that time. Now, don't say no about them people ain't saved back there. But the mysteries that they couldn't understand. How that God can be three and yet one. Mm-hmm. How that the scripture can say, baptize the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and go around and say, baptize the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Oh, so many things. How can Eve eat an apple and uh, uh, cause the, the wreckage of the whole world? Mm-hmm. How can these things be? But those mysteries are promised to be revealed in the end. It's little loose ends that these great warriors has come on the scene, such as Arrhenius and Martin, St. Martin, and uh, uh, Polycar, and uh, the different ones, and Luther, and Wesley, and all of these. See? As, uh, how they have come and just lived long enough to, to kind of bring a light and shine, but they left many things in, in the darkness. Along come the Pentecostal age, like the Lutheran age, and they run out on limbs. But still, all right, don't say it wasn't right, they were. But there's loose ends left that can't be explained. But then in why the seals hasn't been broke to thoroughly reveal what these things are. But then in the last age, all these mysteries are to be solved and handed out, and the seals are to be opened by the Lamb and revealed to the church, and then time is no more. How wonderful. Then, the book then, is a book of redemption, well, and then it goes ahead and we bring in later on how the 144,000 is brought in and so forth. All right. That's Jude. Now, now Paul, let's read a little bit. I'll get some of these scriptures and I think we ought to, to read them. Now, let's all of us turn. Paul in Ephesians 1. Many of them I see are writing, they've got their books and writing the scriptures down, marking them in their Bible uh, for a change. So that's that's fine. I like to do that and they go home and study it, see. And, uh, and uh, if you study it yourself, then you'll, you'll understand it better. See, Just study it and ask God to help you to understand. Now let's read uh, a scripture got written down here. Ephesians 1, 13 and uh, 14. Now, in whom we also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth and the gospel of your salvation, in whom after... That you believe you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. See? Now, while we've got the scriptures open, let us uh, see the Holy Spirit here itself is a seal. The Holy Spirit is a seal. 
and a seal signifies what? A finished work. Amen. The Holy Spirit being a seal to the individual. And to that individual, when he receives the Holy Spirit, then his time of groaning is over. See, because it is a finished work. Like, I used to work for the railroad company. And uh, with little boxcars with cans and different things from the canning factory. And, and, but then before that car could be sealed, the inspector come around to see if that car was properly loaded. If not, the first time it ran together with something, it scattered the stuff and break it, and, and the railroad company was responsible. And that inspector would test everything to see if it was properly in place. If it wasn't, he condemned the car. Then we had to do it all over again until the inspector was satisfied. Then when the inspector is satisfied, he shuts the door. The inspector shuts the door. And the inspector places a seal upon it. And then no one can break this seal until it reaches its destination. That's what the Holy Spirit's been doing. Eh? He goes and... He inspects. That's the reason you can't uh, uh, have these things. And you say, I've spoken tongues, I've shouted, and I've danced the Spirit. That don't have nothing to do with it. See? The Holy Spirit inspects that person until he's thoroughly satisfied and knows that they are, then they are sealed unto their eternal destination. There's not, nothing can ever break that seal. The Bible you put your scripture, Ephesians 4.30, said, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of your redemption. For oh, that word redemption. See? Until the day that the book of redemption has been revealed and the Redeemer comes to claim his possession. Nothing can do it. Don't grieve it. Stay, do things that pleases God. For the book is sealed. Now, and you are sealed. The Holy Spirit itself is the seal. Seal signifies, at least it's words that got from the dictionary. Seal signifies a finished work. And when the seventh seal is broken, the mystery of God is. That seal in these mysterious seals is finished until the day that seal is broken and it's revealed what's on the inside of it. Yeah. If the man's wondering what's in that box car, he said he's supposed to be such and such. They're supposed to be. He's presuming. But when the seal is broken and the door is open, we see into it then and see exactly what's in there. You see it? And that will only be done at the end time. Another thing a seal uh, signifies is ownership. See, the seal has a mark on it. shows ownership. When you are bought by the blood of Jesus Christ and sealed by the Holy Ghost, you no longer belong to the world or anything pertaining to the world. You are owned by God. Another thing is, a seal is a security. Seal means you are secured. Now, you don't believe in eternal security, I don't know. <laughs> but, now, but a seal signifies security to its destination. Well, unto that God that would try to break that seal. And the Holy Spirit seal cannot be broken. You know, I've heard me say that people say, the devil made me do this. No, I'm not. The devil didn't do it. She just wasn't sealed in. Because when you're sealed in, he's sealed out. Amen. Now, you went out to him. <laughs> he couldn't get into you because the only way to get into you is come through the same process that you have. You'd have to be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Then he'd be your brother. <laughs> so see, so he, he didn't do it. No, no. You just went to the borderline and come back lusting for the things of the world. 